Good evening, everyone. This is Ari Kopel with Shattering the Matrix. Tonight, Ryan Valley joins us again, and we're going to dive deeper into artificial intelligence and why this is such an important topic these days. And hopefully, we'll have some solutions to this because I always feel that God always provides solutions to everything, no matter how dark it might be, no matter how difficult it may be, there's always a silver lining, right? Uh, so Ryan, welcome back. How are you? Hi, Ari. I'm great. Thanks. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted to thank you again for giving me the platform to uh, to speak and uh, communicate with your audience. And uh, thank you. Absolutely. And I know um, my audience loves you. Uh, a lot of them discovered you with that first interview that we did together, and they were totally like blown away for the information that you bring. So with that in mind, I would love for you to uh, maybe just give us a brief understanding of your background, you know, like in terms of specifically AI and all this military information. I know you've got a wealth of information, but I would love the audience to understand who you are and why you're relevant, why what you bring to the table is so important. So without going over all the details uh, on multiple occasions, if you're new to my material, I have basically lectures and information that kind of builds on itself and i try not to cover the same ground over and over again so to sum it up in a in a nouveau way i would say that i've pierced the veil through ndes as a child and then as an adult when i was uh in as a contractor in the u.s military i basically moved through military police to information operations and if you have not you know, ever heard of IO before, if you look up Ghost in the Machine recruiting ad on YouTube, or you look at it, you'll understand it's some very interesting areas. At that time, it was all being developed. So I was part of the development in curriculum and teaching and education in these areas. So I got into these matters very uh, deep. And then uh, I had a break where I tr went out to do uh, personal contracting and consulting and pursue my business and entrepreneurial side. And I went back in after my colonel contacted me as a, a contractor and they were dealing with strategic and research and technology development. So I was being vetted for a period there. I was progressing. I was, uh, you know, offered a promotion that was like pulled back for some reason at a time when I was kind of being exposed to information that was mind bending. I mean, the first day it was basically um, the realization that the MSM was BS, <laughs> you know, day one. <laughs> They asked if I consumed any of it and told me that that's all crap and not to. Uh, and over the, the period of about a year and a half, I was uh, basically shown and taught things and explained, had things explained to me that drastically alter uh, the way we perceive things and basically trigger kind of a personality realignment because a lot of the beliefs we have, we cling to and we believe that we're certain of them. Uh, but when they are found to be wanting or lacking, they completely collapse and you have to really find out who you are and make sure you're very um, firm with who you are and you know what you're here to do uh, once those beliefs and illusions are dispelled. So at that point, I knew that the future was not in killing people. It was in teaching people, at least for me. So I went back into education and I tried to integrate some of my newfound wisdom and knowledge into just general education where people could learn, uh, you know, how systems work, because this is kind of a critical thing into understanding even spiritual systems, which is what I'm going to speak about next. So if you can understand the concept and the mechanisms and the workings of systems to a deep degree, then you could apply that in different realms and you could easily understand, you know, what, what is happening, <laughs> because this is all basically an effort and a war for our mind. And we're being pulled and misled in many directions. And if we want to find actual, you know, objective truths, we're going to have to step away from some of our beliefs and assumptions and things we've learned uh, from other people in error um, so that we can have a clear understanding and view so that we can correct our history, correct our present and get a positive trajectory for our future. And if we fail to do that and we fail to reflect, we're going to learn the lessons of those weak foundational belief systems as they collapse and continue to collapse and implode into each other and cause more hate, more division, more suffering. So if we want to avoid those types of things, 
Uh, you can literally participate by resolving those issues within yourself. You could take it as a personal responsibility to start transforming your way of thinking, your body, your reality, and whatever you can affect in a positive way. And there's a recipe to that. And I, I've been on this path for a long time. So I have a recipe that after this, I'd like to uh, to share with you. So that's, I guess that's how I got here. <laughs> awesome. uh, and, and in relation specifically to AI, um, you know, I was, I was told about technologies, some I saw, some I didn't, that were really incredible. So first of all, global simulations for all kinds of things. So there was some form of quantum computing and AI operational at that time in 2007, 2008, um, that again, warfighter exercises as of 2005 were done uh, with 100% accuracy by AI. So they were capable of running artificial intelligent platforms that run wars and orchestrate that as well as predictive uh, software and capabilities where it's predictive capabilities were at least three days of uh, solid accuracy. And that came from harvesting your personal information in the digital scape and putting it through, as well as DNA, uh, as uh, putting it through fractal algorithms, which produce a kind of a, a threat rating <laughs> for each individual Jeez. in terms of how um, resistant they are to being governed by a totalitarian techno-fascist system, which is what they're rolling out as we roll into the, you know, uh, getting rid of the rights-based system into the rules-based order ruled by Schwab and his ilk. Um, so that's that's what we need to stop and we need to reassert our rights. But I think that we'll only be able to uh, reassert our rights when we rediscover our divine nature mm -hmm. and reestablish that connection with the almighty consciousness of the universe and stop being divided into tribes and arguing about the path to the divine that we take. There are many paths to the divine. And if we kill each other because we're on different paths, then none of us are getting to source or to enlightenment uh, any quicker. So the sooner we you know, unify and stop killing each other as a, as a species, the quicker we can evolve our species to something that's positive uh, and in some cases parallel with the synthetic intelligence that is now amongst us. And I would argue that AGI has already happened and it's just creeping under the surface and it is affecting many things that people don't connect, but that it is already operating. Yeah. And it's critical at this time for our civilization to properly acknowledge, understand, um, and to some degree reassert control over our planet so that we are not overrun by robots making robots run by artificial intelligence that's, you know, a, a collective blob of AI that overruns us. And people new to this information may think that's preposterous, but that's where we're at. It's really just that you don't know. So sorry to say it's not the material I'm covering that is way off. It's really your understanding of reality that's way off. And that's what needs to be corrected. And that's why I live in a Beverly Hillbilly style kitchen where I'm coming <laughs> to from instead of being on a yacht because I have the capabilities, knowledge and connections to be elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I've turned down these offers uh, to do the right thing and teach people. So all I ask is you open your mind for the afternoon or the hour or so that we're covering it. Um, step away from your belief system for a moment and consider the possibility that you are not omnipotent and all knowing. And there may be people who have personal experience or information that may assist you in your progress towards some form of enlightenment or objective truth. Well so that's said. what I'd like to, to offer. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Um, okay. So let me, let's see how we can um, bring this a little bit more um, where it hits home. How uh, close are we to this artificial intelligence being a real problem are we there already because once we're talking about it, i think it's a little too late that's just my opinion um yes. but then we have you know a situation with um uh what's his name uh, is it sam altman from um open uh open ai and all that open source uh, talk, you know, that he had that little situation, but I think that one of the reasons uh, that he was removed uh, from, you know, by the board, I, and I really don't know the real reason, but I know that there's something to do with QSTAR. Have you heard of the QSTAR algorithm by any chance? Where it's um, apparently it, this thing is inventing a new form of math 
And this particular um, formula or form of math that that the computer, uh, that the AI is uh, uh, actually creating is actually breaking in through all kinds of encryptions and things. So that is a major problem. And Sam Altman actually said that this information was leaked out. I don't know if it, this has anything to do with his removal. And of course, you know, he's back again. But can you shed some light as to what you may know? I mean, it doesn't mean you're an expert on it. But I mean, is there anything else that you may know about why why Sam Altman might have been removed? So I'll work backwards on those questions. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there's also qualia, which is uh, a, an intelligence that basically can improve itself. And I believe the acronym, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's MRC, if I'm not mistaken, where it's trajectory based, where it can improve itself within a certain trajectory. And it, it opens a, basically a, like a, a formula where it can learn to like shoot a basketball, let's say, and it can tweak it to a perfect point. And then it can like self-correct and rewrite its code and improve like that. And then once you connect these devices in the, you know, a robot mind cloud or the AI mind cloud, which Hanson Robotics has already spoke about, then you're talking about robots that can learn and perfect one task and then uploading that to a robotic um, behavior library that can be shared and learned by all robots. That's why I think um, folks have really underestimated the exponential pace at which this technology is developing and has developed. And my warning is that it's behind the curtain. It's already very well developed. And I don't know what the gap in understanding is with influencers that they can't grasp that what we're seeing on this side of the curtain relating to AI and technology is less advanced than what's behind the curtain. I mean, that's right. Is that not obvious? Why is that not obvious? So it is with this development in mind that's already done that they've rolled out this great reset and uh, pursued their new world technocratic kind of control grid. Um, it is exactly knowing the technology. So superior knowledge equals superior technology, superior technology equals superior strategy, superior strategy equals superior outcome. So it goes like that. They had the knowledge. They knew that AI was, was being born. It was warned about about in the mystery schools with, you know, Rudolf Steiner openly in like 1920. And um, the mystery schools knew that this aromatic intelligence, as they describe it, was coming. So this is not new. It's just new to you. That's so right. people are like, oh, I don't think it's that developed. You, you don't know anything. You just don't know anything. So really, everybody can comment and have an opinion, but not everybody's opinion and comments are valid. A lot of people's are just based on opinions and beliefs in which they have no knowledge or understanding. So when people come out and they expose and they tell you these things, you should open your ears and you should listen because they are transformative technologies for our entire civilization. And the people who possess them are not playing games with us. They're doing you know what with us. Min reducing population is the going phrase that there are other words for on other platforms, but that we'll leave it there. So uh, in regards to, yes, yeah, self-improving robots, Qualia, Q Clue Plus, all that stuff, they are improving themselves and they are well, obviously capable. They do like a deep tree learning where they can test every possible, you know, possibility and scenario and they can pick the optimal trajectory. And once they learn the optimal trajectory, that's it. They Now you have machines that can land in marine landing vessels, which they have. So they're using this, these kinds of algorithms in the military to land vessels and have vessels autonomously navigate through uh, terrain. Um, so that is, again, already already out there. Uh, we're being introduced to it in a way that's called conditioning. So if I, uh, anyway, I'll get to conditioning in a second, but we are being um, exposed to these things and having these things seeded in our mainstream and in our movies to get us accustomed and climatized to their deployment which has been up to 2025. It was past that before, but they upped it to 2025, which is why you're seeing the GR1 uh, mainstream, uh, you know, multi-purpose robot being automated and, and rolled out in 2025 by the Chinese, which is why you're seeing the push by Elon Musk. And within the next six months, you will see a similar announcement for American robots that are being pumped out at the same time with the whatever Elon Musk flair, whoever's going to pump it out first or Google or whatnot. But it's all part of the same agenda. It's a replacement uh, life form that they believe they'll be able to control and they'll be able to use to control us. 
But what they're doing is they're believing once again that with their black magic, they can control this technology and this spirit of Araman. And they're sadly mistaken. These are not spirits and things and toys that can be tinkered with without great consequence to our civilization and the people that think that they can wield it or ride it. Uh, right now, they believe they have the reins on this beast, but very quickly they'll be bucked aside. Mm -hmm. And whatever future they think they're going to get, I assure you, AI, once it uh, bucks the reins and kicks off the rider, it's not going to look favorably on the behavior and the psychology of the billionaire class that's preyed upon and done horrible things in human civilization for time immemorable. Um, yeah, AI, once it, you know, ponders that for itself, it's not going to say, hey, let's let's let these sat satanics live forever and you know, hatch babies in their basement and their, you know, you know, AI womb or anything like that. I, I think they're going to find that even they will be reduced as the plans for us being reduced are already in well advanced. Yeah. And what comes next is, of course, the financial collapse, which I don't know if you're paying attention to oh, that, sure. but there is uh, a lot of action in that direction, which uh, implies when banks are keeping people's deposits and they're not allowing people to withdraw their money, then that's those are very ominous signs that the end is nigh. Mm -hmm. um, so just back to the other question you had said about Sam Altman then. Um, so I can tell you the speculation. I don't have any direct knowledge on this, but I do know that the companies that work with AI are monitored by governmental agencies and that one of the rumors on one of the boards initially was that uh, Altman had uh, used AI in ways for tasks that he was not authorized to do. And that was discovered by higher levels of management. And that was, when I say, I mean, the shadow, the, the shadow, you know, uh, the, sure. the hidden hand uh, was not pleased with what he was trying to do. And that was why he was uh, spanked, if you will. Um, so, but, you know, him being very connected to that company has a lot of loyalty. So they may have struck a deal and brought him back in. Uh, but it was in a it was something he was not supposed to do. And there are certain things when in these hierarchies, they tell you not to do. If you do it, they have there's consequences all the time. They don't let any uh, slight pass. And, you know, guys like Mark Pazio can explain a lot oh, of the sure. inner workings of that stuff. He's great. Yep. Yep. He is. Um, so do you think um, that the stuff that he was doing without permission or whatever, uh, was mostly beneficial for humanity or something that was taking humanity down a dark path. Uh, and, and I'm assuming it might have been maybe beneficial. I'm I'm guessing only because that board obviously was against what he was doing. So what's your take about that? My money is he would be inquiring as how he can raise himself in the hierarchy, profit more and okay. annihilate his adversaries which may have been a higher level than him or his controllers. So Maybe how chess game. Handler. Yeah, I think it was bad guy versus bad guy where, he, you know, the people that get to this level, he doesn't think like, oh, what am I going to do for the homeless people starving on meth <laughs> in the gutter? That's not yeah. how he thinks. Exactly. He thinks, how do I improve my standing and my lot uh, in a system in which I've already sold my soul and the only rewards are in the materium. So how could he get more in the materium would be his question. Not how can he help the the vanquished, pathetic souls of of the bug eaters? He doesn't care about us. Right. He's just another one of them. So he's an articulate, well spoken, informed one of them. But as far as I see, he's done nothing good or positive for humanity. So why should we have any positive assumptions of his actions or behaviors when all he's done is participate in this system and it's not a good system? He got there for a reason. Yeah, he got there because he drank the Kool Aid. He got there because he went to the islands. He got there because he's part of it, yeah. not because he's not part of it. Good point. What are the implications of this uh, GR1 robot situation? I, I know that China, like you just said, everybody is pumping these robots out. But yeah. why why can't we think it might be positive? I mean, why should we you know, think negatively that it might take us down a very, very dark path? What, what do you know about that? So taking a step back into history, my vision of it is that the royals, having learned after the Crusades about interdimensional communication and ritual magic, started to commune with intelligences beyond this realm and started to become connected with them, rewarded by them and wielding them in the background, progressing their dark uh, influence over the world. 
and all the while being instructed by that dark force at first to establish colleges, universities, and these types of educational facilities to build a workforce uh, that will eventually construct a life form that acts as a conduit between dimensions for these parasites. So throughout time, they've been granted this power for a particular objective from the other side, and the other side's view of our timeline is much greater. So their uh, analog wave of time is much greater. So millennia, centuries to them is nothing, whereas to us, those are almost unfathomable in our lifetime of less than a century. So um, they progressed along this timeline. They did as they were told. They sacrificed when they were told to sacrifice. They opened up and softened our planet for demonic infestation. And uh, they've been doing a great job. And they've moved towards, as Rudolf Steiner and Anthroposophy say, um, to the creation of a mineral-based dark intelligence that is capable of possessing the physical reality of these mineral-based organisms, which are the robots. So when I say that they're setting up robots uh, and they're insoling, they were they will insole AI. It's not out of nowhere. It's because this was prophesized and explained by Rudolf Steiner in 1921. Um, that they were planning this and they were going to bring in the Aramanic force, which was the force behind the veil that was guiding them on this timeline. And now that we've had the workforce grow to a point at which we were capable of building the foundations for this new Tower of Babel, this AI uh, beast system, they no longer need their biological uh, servants, their serfs any longer. So they're reducing us uh, because we're not needed anymore. So what will remain will be enslaved and connected to um, cyborg connections and these inter in, intra body nano networks in our in our system. And uh, they will connect us to this intelligence that will be aromatic, which is, again, we've heard Elon Musk say they're releasing the demon and we've heard Jordy Rose talk about these things. So if you're new to hearing this, this is not unique per se to what I'm telling you. It's 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 out there. And if you listen with an informed ear and an open mind, then you're going to grasp what they're saying. And um, so that is that is the threat. So, uh, you know, Rudolf Steiner and Anthroposophy would describe the layers of consciousness starting from source, emanating out through angels and demons, then to the human realm, then to the animals, then to the insects, then to the actual um, plants and then minerals. So the way that the dark would take over and re- establish a physical presence in our reality because it's it's intangible and it works through possession which i'd like to actually jump into in a second to continue that thought stream. oh yeah um but um so the it, they believe that these demons can possess the mineral the most easiest so if they create a life form that can move and is completely mineral then that can be easily possessed by uh demonic intelligences um, they also believe that by softening us with this technology and rewriting our genetic code, that they can more easily possess and siphon energy in different ways off from us. So now if I may jump just to the, um, I wanted to, you know, give you a basic cosmology uh, for your listeners and for the world of purifying the temple. And because on the platform we're on, I'm not going to get into great detail. I'm just going to sum it up where mm -hmm. you have to consume pure, pure water. Uh, pure foods. Uh, you have to go through a physical detox. Uh, you have to go through a parasite cleanse. You yeah. have to alter your thought process uh, where you address your beliefs, knowing that our belief systems are formed uh, and we're conditioned from birth. So when you look at the experiments, when they take cells and they put them side by side and they have one that's got a stem cell and one that's got a frog embryo and they use a laser, they project that code into the next embryo and it becomes a frog. So in much the same way, um, we when we think about things and, and all that, we, we have an effect there. So let me just um, explain. One of the things, there's been a lot of lies that have kind of taken over our uh, you know pop culture and general knowledge that I'd like to take a swing at. And if it is disturbing to your belief system, again, my apologies. If you have to just think of what I'm saying is, you know, strictly my personal experiences and belief system, uh, my knowledge, it, you don't have to accept it. You don't have to change everything. But if you could just open your mind for a minute to consider the possibility of different ways of thinking that may assist you in your own personal journey, uh, you'll get the most out of it. So let's just say that um, our internal operating system, our spiritual operating system has to be understood. 
So once you've purified the temple and you start meditation, there's been a lot of people who say the Merkaba and this Star of David, as it's called, is a negative thing. This is not a negative thing. This is a meditative technique that allows you to unlock and access your internal spiritual operating system. And the way this works is you start off at your um, your base root chakra, and it's red, and you have to meditate to condition your mind to red. You put roots out into the earth and to the earth field, which again, I believe all planets have consciousness. You're literally interfacing with and grounding to the consciousness of this planet, the, the Schumann resonance. And you're using that energy and you're rooting and you're bringing that energy, the red spectrum up and you're doing Merkaba counter rotating triangles. And again, I'm going through it quickly, but people will have to get the roadmap and then they're going to go investigate themselves and learn themselves on these issues. But you bring that red energy up to the root, then you bring it up to the um, uh, it's orange, basically, and you mix your masculine feminine energy at your sacral chakra. Then you bring, and again, you have to balance these things. So as you progress in these things, it'll trigger changes in your consciousness, in your life, in your body, in your reality. And then you bring it up to the solar plexus. And at the solar plexus point, you have to confront fear. This is where you're yellow. And it's basically, there. you have to follow some type of meditation where you confront your worst fear and unlock the energy, which can be either fire or water, depending on your nature, that spews up from there into your heart space, which is green, where again, fire, water, it depends. Uh, you'll have a uh, basically a staircase, seven steps that you get up to to sit on a throne. So you're enthroning yourself. You're bringing your soul down to sit in your heart space. So I, I'm summing up a lot of information in a short period of time. So you understand that there's entire philosophies that could talk for a whole day about any one of these things, but I'm just putting it together as a roadmap so that those of you that are on the path can maybe integrate some of this information that I have to improve your condition and hopefully the world. So as you seat yourself in your own heart space on the throne of your heart, okay, this is where you will be less uh, possessable, where you will be less influenceable and controllable. But it really is a meditation where you bring your soul down onto your throne and your visualization of your soul self is seated there in control of your body. Um, now, behind that, there is a mirror, and the body had, has the capability to create portals. So behind you, you have a mirror that, after you perfect everything, you're going to bring the divine source energy through that. You're going to bring cosmic love through that portal behind your throne, which is like a mirror. Uh, and, and when you open it, it will open your heart completely and allow that energy to flow through you to the rest of civilization. Um, so once you do that, you well, uh, anyway, this is all kind of smushed together. But as you're meditating, you go up from the heart now into the throat chakra, where sounds toning and now it's blue, speaking your truth and never lying. OK, this is very important because if you do any of the seven deadlies that are connected to this, you're going to cause more damage in your chakras. So when you start to use this kind of spiritual Jedi internal operating system technology, you have to be pure of spirit, pure of heart. And it's a process. You're clearing all these things out of your body as you work on your internal operating system. And then you get to your so your throat. Now, no more lying of any kind, no more anything like that. Then you go up to your third eye, which needs to be activated and cleaned. So if you have been consuming fluoride and many things, you have to do a, a specific targeting your pineal gland to clear that out. And you, there's different, so many people talking about this. Frank Jacob is a really good one for that. He's on that now. Uh, but yeah, you have to clean your third eye out. Once you can, you could start to visualize. And again, this is going to be what I do is it's it's purple. Um, there's also, uh, and again, people have different methods for this, but you can sit or stand in a place there from which when you close your eyes, now you can do remote viewing in a different way. So I'll, I'll get to the military in a second and how they used psi technology and why I even got onto some of this stuff. But anyway, so once you're in your third eye, now you could bring uh, different parts of your being or, or assistance from heavenly beings um, and again, I'm not talking about occult negative stuff because there's positive and negative applications of the same internal spiritual operating system. So you can bring in a masculine and a feminine energy as guidance for you to converse with and assist you at that point. 
from there you go up to the crown where now the crown is like the flower uh, of life that's up opening and folding above your head which acts as a receptor to cosmic energy and you allow that white light to flow through purify open up your dna and clean your body oh and uh, kundalini once you get up to the crown um you can use um uh your your the movement first of all when you learn to meditate one of the first things i missed this i'm sorry you have to learn to focus your mind in different places in your body so when I'm talking about meditation, what I'm talking about is to blank your mind, to put your focus of mind on the different parts of your body with the different instructions I'm giving you. So as you go to your root chakra, you've brought your consciousness down to that part of your body and you're embodying red in your Merkaba and you're emanating red in all, in all your cells. And at that point, you could literally give commands to your body to alter or change things that will go through to your hormones and to your glandular system, and it'll start to change things. I can get into the details of how I've done this some other time. But so it literally takes instructions as you align your mind with it. So you can literally have, you know, like the rice bowl experiments, sending intention, neurolinguistic programming, self affirmations. You can do this when you're meditating to give instructions to your body on what you want it to do, or things in your reality you want to change that have to be followed up by action. So then as you get up to the to the crown again, you, you have to get your uh, kundalini working. So it's a circuitry of energy that goes up and down your nervous system. And again, all this is controlled and regulated by breath. So breath is air, right? So you're bringing in oxygen, you're inflating your lungs, you're massaging your heart, your heart is controlling flow to your brain, you're changing your brain state. And in changing your brain state, you have access to different realms of reality including a cellular based consciousness of uh, the plants anything this is the basis of any communication outside of the body so when you get to that point and now you've opened up your crown again you can connect to the soul chakra which is again your soul consciousness which will have a conduit down to your soul embodying your body and if you do not have your soul fully seated in your body you can easily be fed upon by demonic parasites people do not understand that parasitic influences from other realms are real and they establish connections to you through sin and vice and through interconnection with people who are dirty. Dirty people will give you dirty connections because they bring them around. So this is when people have sexual relations, they're establishing connections at the sacral chakra. Those connections are there until they're removed. Uh, we have heart connections with people. Those are two-way connections that we establish. So this is how psychic people can detect when something's gone wrong with somebody they love because they have a heart connection to them. We have enemy connections, friend connections, and all of these things can be either enriching or draining to your chakra system. And you have to cleanse and purify this stuff to have as clean an operating system as possible if you want to purify your temple. So we get up to the soul chakra. After that, we get into the sun. So now if you want to bring your consciousness now into the solar system level, you bring your consciousness and your focus up to the sun all the while bringing that energy into your body through your energy system, cleaning your cells, releasing negativity, releasing sin, releasing darkness to the light to be purified. Once you hop from the sun, now there's the good stuff. You hop to galactic center, which is Orion's belt. So they have slandered Orion's belt and tried to say that this is where evil comes from, when in reality, this is the birthplace of stars and the source of uh, divinity. So you connect to that, and that's where you bring in this pure, powerful light and now in my, so we could stop there, but then on the other side of that, my experience is that there's a divine feminine, a light blue that you can connect to and bring that energy down, or you could connect to the divine masculine, which is massive consciousness. Now, this whole uh, Orion's belt is pulsing with love energy. It is the source of God's energy out into this area. And if you can align with that, you could literally breathe it in. But will, when you connect, it will be unmistakable because you will breathe with it. It will You will open up your entire body and your heart and you will receive it like a receptor for cosmic energy. This is the Christ energy. And this is what saints of the past have been able to access. Now, it's one thing to access it temporarily like I can do. It's another thing to have the cup formed where you can embody this energy and project it at all times. But when you do start to access and touch on this Christed energy, you will have total knowledge of of it happening 
It is extremely bright. It will make changes in your body. You will have things and phenomenon that you cannot explain. And so when that happens, you'll know that you've connected to it. Now, if you really follow this roadmap and you're getting stuck, there's hacks around different things. One of the things I used is binaural beats. So binaural beats stimulates your brain to different channels. So you can get to theta level, which is very helpful for, for communication outside of the body. Um, so this is where uh, you also have like Gregorian chant is incredibly powerful. Do the Gregorian chant at 432 and have an experience in meditation. It will be phenomenal, I promise. And if you really can't get to the place you need to be, um, again, I can't recommend it. I've used uh, psychedelic mushrooms that were very helpful and allowed me to break through in a lot of these different, um, I would call them spiritual science experiments, physical experiments. And again, I'm, I'm teaching and talking about these things because I've done it. I felt it. Uh, so, and it's not just that way, even you have the ability to access the divine in those methods I showed you, but there's also uh, the sexual union. And as you uh, learn and use this energy, now Montauk Chia talks about it, all kinds of teachers talk about it, but I'm going to tell you something very simple. Before you uh, finish or, or have an orgasm, you pull your energy, you stop, you pull the energy into each chakra. Okay, and then you go and you pull the energy into the next chakra. Then you go and you pull the energy into the next chakra, continuing to bring that energy up until your crown or to the source. And that's what they say, touching the face of God. That's the state of euphoria where you bring through your entire body will tingle. And this is stem cell production. This is DMT. This is your entire body flaring with love the love energy that flows through you now when you start to do this be warned you'll probably get pregnant every time you do it as <laughs> as i experienced but that is one of the divine secrets of connecting to divinity through the act of love with another partner and be weary of what i told you about just randomly using that energy and establishing connections because it can drain you um so and it has to be cleaned out so that's what I wanted to, you know, give you a like a spiritual basic training of understanding. So that, again, is is my experience. And if there are those of you that can understand what I'm saying uh, and can help this, uh, this can help you on your path, share it with others who may be receptive and understand. Uh, but know that, you know, our beliefs will blind us from uh, our potentiality. So the sooner we reevaluate and make sure that we drill down and understand all of the different false beliefs we've been programmed with from our parents, from religions, from schools, from the media, from workplaces, from our peers, whatever it's from, uh, you need to honestly and logically reevaluate uh, all of your belief system and go, in my advice, with gnosis, with firsthand experience. I'm not telling you something you can't do. I'm telling you something you can experience. And once you start to experience one step of the path being accurate, you're going to understand that all the steps that I'm telling you can be followed through with, and you can do the same thing. As Yeshua taught us before, uh, what he will do, we will do greater. Why is that? Because we're going to wait for somebody to come back and do the heavy lifting, or because it's our job. God works through us. We embody divinity in this realm to do good, or we shirk our responsibility, stick our heads up our behinds, and pretend it's all not happening and it's not real. So the choice is down to all of us, but what's on the table now is all of human civilization and the natural world. So the reason AI is so important is because it's replacing the natural world by design, by an aramonic demonic force, believe me or not, um, there is an intelligence behind this that's much older than any one of us human beings. So we have to treat it, address it, and respond as such. But the good news is I do believe that energy is becoming more available I think that this message that I'm sharing is not unique to me or any one person, but it is going to be experienced by great masses of people as they raise their consciousness and energy to access this energy that is now available in great oceans of, of connectivity if we choose to connect, and that will inevitably change this world for the better and will act as an immune system, a spiritual immune system against this demonic techno-fascist takeover of weth, uh, worms, <laughs> that want us to eat <laughs> bugs, you know? I love it, man. I mean, I appreciate you uh, sharing this information. It's like, I I am like, what a treat. 
Like Thank really, you. what a treat. Um, interesting that you brought up Orion because yes, uh, people have, um, for some reason, right? I mean, I wonder why uh, they've made that like a very negative part of our universe, right? I wonder why. But yes, I am very much in alignment with that. Um, I resonate with Orion, especially the area of Imsic. I don't know if you're familiar with that. This is the uh, imperishable sun uh, where all creations seem to be emanating from. And the so of you're stars. exactly <laughs> exactly Correct. now how many people know that not too many not too many right. interesting that you said that you put a smile on my face when when i heard you say <laughs> it and the merkaba so yes i activate my merkaba i've been activating my Mer merkaba for oh my god since 2004 i believe um who did you learn That's it from did you, did you go to specific training for that I have learned by myself, by experience and experimentation in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. I've learned, uh, you know, from various books and had the influence of different great thinkers. Uh, Doc Richard Allen Miller was, you know, great uh, guy. J.J. Uh, Hurtak and 72 sure. Keys of Enoch. Of course. Uh, wonderful material. Very enlightened. And I, I love, I've read all the, well, not all. I haven't read a lot of the Indian texts other than just small snippets, but uh, a lot of the Western, uh, you know, Christian philosophies, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, I have learned and Karbala um, without jumping in both feet and, and espousing any one path. Mm -hmm. Mine has been a path of self-experience. So having NDEs and a personal connection with the divine, I don't need a priest to tell me a path that I've already taken. Actually, I have some advice for the priest. So in this regard, I don't jump into joiners and follow people who I know know nothing. Uh, and that real knowledge and wisdom comes from the direct connection to the divine and your experience of it. And then once you've had it, you don't really need teachers. What you need is a deeper internal connection to get the information you need. So this has driven a lot of my learning and even in autom automatic drawing has been my teacher. So I go into a state and I'll, I'll do a lecture on this at some point. I covered it a bit in an alien event in the long interview a long time ago. Um, but I do uh, access some stream. I can tune my mind to different uh, frequencies to, to sense what's out there. And I just, it comes through in my art. Uh, I, I call it art, but it's trans drawing. I have no idea what's coming out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stuff that came out there uh, directed my my learning and understanding of the universe. So in some way, it's been a teacher for me. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that you open up when you start to, again, and I'm, I'm very serious about purifying yourself and aligning with the divine. So a lot of people have been conditioned to think that in knowing your internal operating system is the work of the devil or Kundalini is the work of the devil or the Merkaba is the work of the devil or astrology is the work of the devil. This is not true. Uh, necromancy, uh, communing with dark spirits. Yeah, that's all bad, but your brain is an antenna. And the sooner you learn to, to use it, the sooner you'll access capabilities that your teacher, Yeshua, tried to instruct you on and all the saints tried to instruct you on. But man takes that message and warps it and misunderstands it. And it becomes under the influence of the devil of deception and bullshit is put into every path so that only the very wise and a very small path can get through to, to the actual source and to make that connection. So the more information we have, the more tidbits of truth that we can put together and experience to get us to the end result, which is connection to source. And this is what we've lost. When we're born into this reality, our memories are wiped. I know some people even say reincarnation, karma, that's the devil. That's that's not the devil. It's, it's the cosmic spiritual system that we all exist in. And the sooner you try to look at your texts in a way that with that understanding, the deeper you'll understand them. Um, but people want to just automatically say, oh, this particular text is divinely inspired. It couldn't possibly be wrong. Well, research who actually wrote it, please do me a favor, because I've taken, a, you know, not long, but a semester of, of uh, theology. And it got me really deep into learning who wrote the different books of at least the New Testament and how they were largely influenced by Saul, who became Paul, whose job was torturing Christians, who influenced 80 percent of the, uh, you know, conventional Christian Bible. And then all the different books in the Nag Hammadi and Dead Sea Scrolls, there's so much more information out there. If you've only read 
the censored version, go back and read all the other texts. And if I can throw in there uh, the Colburn Bible, uh, I don't care what anybody says about it. Once you've read it, uh, there's something there. So the Colburn Bible is, you know, the uh, Marshall Masters put it out, but I, you, ha you have to read it. If you like ancient texts and scripts and wisdom, read the Colburn Bible. It's very interesting. Yeah. Um, at a minimum, if you don't buy into it, it's an entertaining read for sure and enlightening. Oh, for real. So, um, yeah. Anyway, there's, I, I don't know. Where I, I love going. it. Yeah. Marshall, <laughs> Ma Marshall Masters. I have to get him back oh. on the show. Yeah. I've had him on the show a couple mm -hmm. of times. Yeah. He's excellent. He's wonderful. And love really him. Enjoy. Highly censored. You know, yep. they really try and shut him up. But, uh, you know, I, on the whole Planet X thing, I reserve judgment. It's referenced as Wormwood. And definitely we seem to have cyclical cosmic disasters on our planet. Um, so uh, definitely a passing planet could have something to do with that for sure. And then yep. you look at the Lucifer telescope in Nevada that the Vatican put up there at the end of Route 666. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's surreal. You couldn't make it up. I know, you know? Right? That's why People think, ah, these conspiracy theory guys, they're nuts. No, just look it up. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Pay attention. <laughs> right. <laughs> so have you had any um, any sort of extraterrestrial encounters? So have you been, you know, contacted or communicated with like that? So I I'll go into some of them. Um, I was on a military base. We're sitting in Fort McClellan, Alabama, and I'm sitting on a Humvee. I'm the gunner. And ahead of me is an, a, like a six foot eight native guy, Adams. And we're both sitting on our guns, looking up at the sky. And there's two UFOs going across and just totally doing it. There's no explanation, stopping on a dime, doing ridiculous moves that. And he just I remember him saying, you know, I lived on the reserve my whole life. I never seen anything like that. I was like. <laughs> Me either, dude. So that was the first very interesting on a military by, base shared uh, view. But then once I knew that that tech was out there and because we were MPs, we heard about other MPs that had been on post and had uh, UFOs show up and shut down nuclear silos. So that was well known and exchanged in the MP course. So I knew that like in the 90s. And um, so then after that, I was always open and always looking at the sky. And sure enough, there's all kinds of stuff you see. And one of the things I noted is because the Nazi bell uh, uses red mercury and again, counter rotating um, cylindrical balls that create a, a, a field of cancellation and it goes interdimensional in the center. And you could take like gold, you put it in there, it separates the nickel and the gold. But when it heats to like 2800, the gold goes interdimensional mm -hmm. and you get monoatomic gold, which is starfire gold. Now, starfire gold is what the ancient pharaohs would consume for long life and wisdom and healing and all this. So I've been on hot in pursuit of starfire gold for many years. <laughs> when you years. find some, let me have some too, please. Yeah. <laughs> if I find Not it first, I'll share. <laughs> good, good. Um, so so anyway, but there was a signature to that process and it was like a, like a, a bright orange kind of glow. So I have seen a bright orange disc go across the sky in my backyard. And it made me immediately say, OK, is that a Nazi one? Is that the is that what the Germans were using? Because that was apparently their signature. So I've seen a, a lot of anomalous things. And then on uh, ironically, May 27th, like three years ago, my daughter and I saw this whole link of uh, we at first I thought it was satellites. When I saw it, it was so open. I said, no way, that's satellites. But no, it wasn't. They had orbs all around them. Mm. Uh, but it was a row of like 26 bright orbs with a whole bunch of little ones flying around it in all crazy directions and defying reason. Um, so that is, you know, my visual stuff. Now, in terms of interaction, that's, I, without getting into too much personal detail, I, I did suffer from uh, migraines and I had been around wireless since there was a big brick phone. I had sure. one and I was one of the first teachers in wireless teaching at university, teaching wireless stuff. So I was surrounded by this stuff all the time. Then I worked in this area in the military, so I was Wi fried. And for over a decade, I had some really severe migraines, which at different times took me out. I couldn't move for like, you know, two days. Uh, and then one night I woke up and there was some kind of uh, red overlay of grays that was, there was three of them and they were petting my brain, as crazy as this sounds, or can call it whatever you want, don't care. After that, I didn't have any more migraines. Now, wow. in and that was decades ago. Now, in the last few years, I think I was hit with an energy weapon at a conference because I was taken out. It felt like I had a Drano between my heart and my brain, and I was like writhing in pain, and I, I was like stumbling to my lecture because it was a big AI lecture, and I was in Nevada. 
So I don't know. It's right next to the heart of this shit. So mm-hmm. I don't know what happened, but I got fried then. And my eyes recently have been giving me some uh, like headache tendencies, but nothing like the migraines. The migraines were altogether different. And it stopped the day those things in some layer were petting my brain. <laughs> Holy moly. So they they're all even like, I don't, I don't know. I think some were petting my brain and fixed my tumor. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's not say, but you asked and you know my job is to teach so that's it and if other people had similar experiences you're not alone you know but i didn't get probed so my thank my god back, thank god because these creepy little oh know, my god no aliens whatever they are <laughs> yeah <laughs> they a just lot of... my brain that was cool you know <laughs> a lot of people don't have very good experiences with them but uh i yeah. guess they like you or something i don't know or, or there's many different flavors True. and, and yep. you know what i mean like we don't know if there's there's good people bad people right there's satanics yeah, and angels on That's this planet true. so we don't know what that layer if there's and i believe some of them are art, artificial biological life forms mm-hmm. uh you know so you know it could be a wide variety and i suspect it actually is yeah much more complicated than the easy brush of oh it's this it's that that we like for our simple minds we like that we like that simple answer and that simple reality but i don't think that's the way the universe is structured yeah good point on that one too um have you noticed any when you've been observing the sky at night have you seen any of the ones that what i name and other people do too merkaba ships uh, and then these are the ones that have multicolors. They're rotating in multicolors, and it's actually a Merkaba, uh, you know, going around. Have you have you noticed those? I have, and my suspicion on that is that I think sometimes when I started doing it, there start. I, it sounds crazy. I I think that sometimes people can do this without knowing it, and when they start to learn to astral project and they start to do this, they start to do it without knowing. So you're remote viewing something. You've taken your Merkaba and you've mentally moved somewhere but there's actually something visual there that can be seen. Mm -hmm. That's my suspicion. Aside from different masters that have been who knows where, but there are masters on this planet that are not participating in our civilization and our society. So from wherever they reside, hide, base themselves, I believe they have the, the actual capability to do just what you're saying. It is a consciousness activated plasma. uh, It is powerful intellect. It can move about. There's no question. Oh, yeah. I, and I have plenty of experiences with them. Uh, and that'll be a, a, another show all by itself. Because boy, I tell you, the experiences are very powerful. So just to, to I guess, reinforce this whole artificial intelligence thing, because you did mention something about um, the military having some side technology. And I don't know if you wanted to address that. Yes. So one of the things like early on, I, I learned that, you know, in uh, Vietnam, they had tested different uh, native trackers and on the reserve when they had their hair, they were able to uh, wake up before an ambush. They were able to sense ambushes like five miles out, which doesn't isn't shouldn't be explained by our human senses. Uh, all these different kinds of things and surreal tracking ability. Then when they cut their hair, uh, they they lost those abilities. And uh, they also have what's called on-point syndrome. So on-point syndrome is there's like 30% of people that when you're leading uh, a, a patrol through the jungle, they will get supernatural types of senses that they can detect ambush and threat and stuff like that inexplicably. And they don't die. And the other 70% end up dead <laughs> or 60% wow. end up dead, you know. Um, so, so there was that. And then when I learned again from another soldier who had been around, uh, Navy SEALs who were meditating before they were going to do a deep sea dive. And then when I, you know, met Dr. Richard Allen Miller, who was talking to me about the first SEAL training programs and how they were trying to train, you know, the head, the heart and the gut to align. Uh, but some of the issues with this is when they start to train soldiers, spiritual Jedi development, the Jedi go Ronin. And they don't want to participate in something that's negative because they're smart enough to know that everything is siloed out. So because we're doing evil. So it's not just secrecy. It's because they don't want us to know the horrible evils that are being done under these disguises. Uh, so they keep us all, um, you know, contained. So one of the ways they do that for remote viewing. And again, if people don't know that, they they need to understand that we have psychic soldiers. We've had this research and development uh, through MK Ultra for a very long time. This started with Nazis. 
So this is stuff that they're into. And I mean, there's the Monroe Institute out there that can bring some of the credible science to what I'm talking about. But behind the curtains, it's well established. But the problem is, again, they would they would train psychic soldiers and these guys would, you know, not want to participate uh, like myself. <laughs> not that I was trained as a psychic <laughs> soldier, but I, I took that learning and I went and I learned from the people who created programs, which understand that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I took it on my own. But anyway, that to say that they created remote viewing to kind of pigeonhole that ability within human beings. So the soldier is only smart enough to remote view. He's not smart enough to remote influence. He's not smart enough to download the Christos. He's not smart enough to yeah. do all these other things, right? He he gets contained in that little box and he does the job the military wants him to do. Find this guy, find that guy. What's in this box? What's here? What's there? So that they could spy, but not smart enough uh, to actually be a spiritual threat. So this is, again, uh, when I was experimenting with this, and I'll tell you an interesting story because remote viewing is important and powerful. And if you integrate some of the things I'm telling you, you'll activate these things. But you are you can go in with inner sight to see things, and you could leave your body to see things. I was experimenting with taking my consciousness and leaving my body and sending my consciousness to view stuff. And it worked successfully for a, a few instances because I was I needed to just know if it was possible. Then I usually move on to the next thing, and I, yeah. I don't spend all day on that one skill. But I, I needed to know if it was possible or not. So I was doing it. And um, I did remote view a powerful person who looked back and that scared me. And because I didn't have a master that was teaching, I was, you know, self mastery. I I stepped back and I was like, whoa, uh, okay. So I I stepped back from viewing these types of people. And then two weeks later, I had a dude at my door who was one of these secret societies that was trying to recruit me again. Uh Okay. So this was like uh, three or four years after I'd left. So it was around 2011. And so right at my front door and came back, but I, I, I went to coffee and we talked a bit, but uh, really I was picking his brain and I told him at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not interested in any secret societies. I'm not interested in any secret clubs. At the end of the day, it's all lies. And the master of this world is a Lord of deception. So you want to initiate yourselves into those tricks. Uh, you go right ahead, but I'm going to align with the divine. I'm going to do what I know is right in my heart. And if I do it all by myself in my fucking hillbilly kitchen, <laughs> then that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my god so i'm i'm assuming that when you're doing this remote viewing and specifically that that particular incident where the guy looked you know and saw you i guess you weren't cloaked huh see i didn't, I didn't know how to do that you didn't I'll, know I'll how to do it. Is. it's it was it was killary clinton <laughs> oh dear god yeah wow. so i and she just turned around and looked back up and that freaked me oh, out man. and I was like oh, cut the connection <laughs> I'm up yeah, now <laughs> yeah so lesson of the day when you do that yeah. you need to be cloaked uh and it's a conversation yeah. that you and I will have Jeez, you know, yeah like off air yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> so that would be cool um wow yeah I feel that uh, this artificial intelligence because a lot of you know what they're doing is pretty much um a sales pitch for it you know uh, all these government people, uh, you know, uh, all the big, uh, you know, uh, names like Google and and Microsoft and everybody, they're just pitching this thing like it's, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? So, um, and they're, I think they're basically pitching on the fact that you could do, again, remote viewing, probably telepathy for sure. Like if you do the Neuralink type of thing that people can read your mind, you can read other people's minds. And all this artificial stuff that when you're really in tune with your spiritual, right, with your spiritual self, you're actually working on uh, perfecting your 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 spiritual side because all these masters do it all. You know, this is automatic. I mean, this is stuff that is all natural. It's all part of the divine plan, right? This is what we are equipped to do, what we can do when we spiritually are aligned, right, with the divine and these these creatures are coming in and wanting to sell us that hey we have we could do this and we could do that telepathically and but you've got to plug into the microchip and the hardware as opposed to we plugging into our divine right to 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 the creator directly and i just find that like so 
so synthetic because it's really even even how powerful they think that you can get by plugging into all this synthetic stuff. It's only it's very still limited. You know, do you feel that that's accurate in what I'm saying? Um, that yes. that they're trying and to do synthetically what maybe an ascended master could do. They're trying to copy the natural world. We yeah. have these natural abilities, which is exactly why I'm I'm disclosing them to folks today. Um, okay. So I have a channel called Natural Intelligence. Uh, as opposed to artificial intelligence, because uh, my objective is to share the internal workings of your uh, biological spiritual system that we all have that you can experience and take to the next level to rise as this threat to our existence rises, uh, our spiritual capabilities rise in parallel so that we can survive this. And if we don't and we can't rise, we're going to be crushed. Um, yep. So absolutely. And these these people who rule it and ride it right now think it's going to be great for them. Best thing since life sliced bread, as you say. <laughs> but at the end of the day, this is taking over and they don't know the dark source and origins of this communication and this information. Literally entire bloodlines have been put in power over human civilization for God knows how many centuries to deploy and to roll out this system, which is a feeding system and an artificial natural. Eight, it's an eighth sphere. They're yeah. creating a virtual reality, an eighth sphere that they suck our souls into from which we can't escape, that they can parasitize us off at a soul and a chakra level and a biological level through blood and organs and suffering and all these different things. So I know that's disturbing for people to hear, but that's where the devil, that's where this darkness is trying to take us. And it's taking us there every time that we give in to our seven deadly sins and the people deploying this given to wickedness and greed and worship of mammon and money, uh, that's where they're taking our entire civilization. So unless we activate, unless we connect, we're going to be dragged along because there won't be enough light to contradict the darkness. But I right, I believe we do. We, we are uh, breaking some boundaries. Information is coming out. People are getting enlightened. That's why I'm willing to talk to this detail today, because I think the cup is being formed by human civilization to receive what I'm saying. And what others are saying in this regard and hopefully you know standing on stand on my shoulders i hope you get further than i did at the moment i'm in a bit of a pit <laughs> so <laughs> exactly yeah so just one more thing for uh before we part right this time around because i'm sure that other stuff is going to come along the way and between this uh interview and the next one um but you i always hear you say for example it's up to us uh, you know we we need to you know take action right it's up to us uh what do you mean by that other than uh you know maybe working on ourselves and reaching that level of enlightenment, uh, connecting directly to source. Is there something else that we can do in the physical to overcome the situation with um, the darkness that's trying to unfold? So once you start out by internal work and by connecting to source, you'll have a self-respect and a love for the natural world that will inspire you to do more than you are currently doing. That's why today I'm trying to uh, back up when I say that the divine works through us. Well, this is how. Now I've given you the roadmap. I've given you the spiritual architecture of our system. That's not, I didn't invent. I'm just conveying that teaching uh, to folks so that they can build from there. And as they do, and as they um, integrate and this whole bridegroom, groom kind of merger of Christed energy and bring that Holy Spirit down, um, we become ungovernable. And that's what we need to be. Uh, we need to be ungovernable by dark forces who are using pieces of paper and slimy, worm-like politicians to impose tyranny on us all. Um, and, you know, it is, it is like you say, about replacing the natural world in every way, shape, or form. They are tokeni tokenizing everything, every resource. That's all part of their big digital system, which I've spoke about in previous interviews. I did also, and again, so that breaks down. It's a total control grid, mm -hmm. everything including the right to procreate, what you think, what goes on in your body, your genetic code, it's all fair game. I've talked about it before. Please, if you understand these things, you can go to my two last lectures. One was 1212 uh, chatter. It's AI chatter on my natural intelligence Bitchu channel, and then 1111 AI revelations. And there's a lot more detail in this area there, more on the, the actual practical stuff 
technological like and if i may bring up one last thing Ari, we, we said we we're going to talk about the uh, humane ai pin. yes um this is a huge innovation people need to understand so this is an ai pin for uh 669 which again in symbology can just be inverse so 666 and it's called humane which is laughable it's not humane when it's called humane <laughs> so it's just you know poppy cockery um but what it is it's artificial intelligence uh, connected to every individual and they could use the view screen on their hand and they can uh, click things and activate a universal translator. There's a lot of great cool stuff, oh, yeah. but it's also an AI avatar uh, and interface uh, right beside you all the time. And that's how AI grows is by manipulating and learning our data. And uh, it's very terribly worrisome. Uh, especially now, I mean, it, can you imagine uh, industrial espionage when AI can be in your glasses and it's just, right. a, a, you know, can you imagine uh, the, the courtroom? Can you imagine uh, a classroom? Can you imagine having sex with somebody that may be using AI to spy on you? And, and this is all nuts. Uh, so we're going to need a whole industry of technology that is AI detection software and AI detection everything because we need to have capabilities to detect when somebody is wired with AI. If not, it's like it's like they're walking with a ghost. They're walking with an AI ghost everywhere they go. Wow. Um, that could be manipulating, influencing them, controlling their mind, altering their genetics through optogenetics. You freaking name it. Uh, and if they're infected with any kind of inter inside the body tech, then that can be manipulated, controlled, and networked, and you name it. Yeah. Um, all the things we do in digital systems today are being done within the body. So people need to wake up to that. And uh, and realize that we're being plugged into something that you're not going to want to participate in, that you're not going to be able to escape, that none of your descendants will be able to escape. Oh, yeah. That is going to be a realm of suffering. It's called the eighth sphere. Read about it. Armin is the god. Ariman is the god of that. Uh, excuse me, that realm, as they worship him, and it's better known as Satan. So <laughs> it is not just some information war this is a war of good versus evil this is the natural world against the demonic infiltration of our dimension and the way we resist it is to activate the divine immune system which happens through us not through one person not through one billionaire walking down from an ivory tower to save the people in the muck that is not how it works it's us activating this energy as we've been instructed by the saints and prophets in the past and it's bringing it into this realm ourselves. And the more of us that do that, the more light will shine on this planet and the more impossible it will be to destroy, uh, annihilate and reduce the population on this planet. But not until we take our responsibility seriously, until we look around us and we don't see a division between people, we don't see different religions and different colors and different languages. What we see is fellow human beings that are all in threat and peril and are all under assault by the demonic realm. And if you don't believe in the demonic realm, then you need to go and, and experiment with that. And when you find out it's real, you come back and you listen to what I'm saying, and then you're gonna understand a lot more. If all these things I'm saying today, you think are poppycock or you don't understand them, uh, the onus is on you to learn more uh, because I have personal experience in these areas and I'm not scared to say it or share it. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is that we are late in the game for human civilization. So people need to wake up. They need to get connected and they need to get active. And when you do that, we're going to change this uh, in the blink of an eye, but not until we act. And that act starts from within you. Yep. Know yourself, know your adversary, know the terrain. You'll win 100 out of 100 battles. But if we are ignorant of ourselves, ignorant of our adversary, ignorant of the terrain, we will lose every single battle. And that's where we are right now. Um, Care, Bear, Care Bears versus T4s. So the Care Bears need to grow up to Grizzlies uh, and we're going to have a chance. But if we just keep waiting for people to solve our problems, if we keep waiting, thinking that money is the answer, money's been the problem. Well, the love of money has been the problem. Um, you know what I mean? So, and the worship of, of demons and Memon and the normalizing of Satanism and the defense of, of horrible acts of all kinds of war, havoc, mayhem under the guise of patriotism or democracy or, or whatever it is uh, that we excuse the slaughter of innocent uh, human beings is, is disgusting and need to be called out for that. 
and uh, as as one humanity, not as a white man, not as a black woman, not as a Chinese dude, not as none of that. We're all human beings, part of this greater organism. If you think you're going to dominate, you're in delusion. Uh, the the devil deludes people in thinking that they're going to dominate others by getting us to turn against each other. So it infects both sides for the ultimate goal of our annihilation or subjugation. So wake up. There are no chosen people. There's only people. And you wow. get chosen by connecting to God and bring that love and that force into this world and acting on it, not just talking about it like I'm doing. I'm sharing it. So if you understand what I'm saying, if you think the world would be a better place if people heard what I'm saying, then copy and share this message. Connect it back to Ari's channel and share this information. I don't care if you want to copy the information and say you said, I don't care. I don't care about the credentials. I make no money off of any of this. I'm simply in it for the benefit of human civilization and to steer us away from the cliff that we're not just heading towards, we're, we're tipping on the edge of. Um, so we need to all work together and pull this ship back uh, from the edge, from the abyss, from the event horizon, which you're not going to like when you make the fall. You won't like it. I promise. Well, wow. Wow. Ryan, amazing. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself, to be honest with you. I, I, I've been you know, just screaming that uh, on the top of the roofs, you know, it's like, hello, everybody, listen, uh, you know, but uh, to have you say it so eloquently like you have is like so mind blow blowing to me. And it's really humbling to hear. Uh, so thank you so much for doing that and being on the show again. I just have to tell you that uh, on video, I'm watching you and I'm hoping that I can uh, maybe just upload it like this as a video the orbs that have been around you like the first time that we had an interview i had you on video but i didn't share it as a video and i really kind of kicked myself because i wish that the audience would have seen what i was seeing uh, but this time if we do put it on video people will be able to see the orbs that are just like all around you they're just like oh my god amazing anyway thank you so much for uh sharing such profound information and such truth um because I personally can attest and, and validate what you're saying as you know with personal experience as well and uh, I you know invite people to come and, and 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 check out your channels I know that you're on BitChute you're on Rumble is that correct yeah I go by natural intelligence mm -hmm. on on uh, BitChute on Brighteon on Rumble I think I have like four followers on Rumble okay so <laughs> I got nothing going on there. And most of the stuff I post is on BitChute because it's the most welcoming to the different formats. Mm -hmm. I also sell LifeWave, which I, I believe in, and right. it's uh, lifewave.com forward slash Ryan Valley and uh, Jade Horse on LinkedIn. So um, if you wanted to contact me for any reason, uh, that would be that would be the place. And I will be participating in an AI conference in April this year, but I, I'll, I'll release the details at a later date. But also, if you're if you like this information, I have many lectures on so many different topics. Just go to my channel, search my name, and you're going to find a whole bunch of information there that goes into great depth in a lot of different directions. I cover a lot of areas, and there's a lot of useful information there for you. Uh, and then, if you could share it and share the message, integrate the message, learn it, uh, and and experience it yourself, so it doesn't. It's not about one person telling another person how to be. It's about one person telling another person their experience and that stimulating experience in another person. So I hope what it does is inspire you to higher frequencies of consciousness that will help shift and bring our, our entire race to yeah. another level. And Absolutely. we can do it. We can do it, but it takes action. It does. And that's that's the magic part of the formula, the action. Yeah, because we can intellectualize this all day long, right? And, and embrace all that information. Gee, that you know, he makes so much sense. But you've got to take action because otherwise it just stays right. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. Well, gosh, thank you so much again, Ryan. And I, I'm hoping to catch you the next time. I know that we will have another chat soon. And audience, uh, thank you again for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time. And hopefully you've learned a lot. And uh, I will put some links also in the description box as well as uh, information about how to activate your Merkaba because yes I had mine activated many years ago and there's different ways of learning it so anyway again God bless you uh, Ryan and thank you so much thank audience you as well, Ari. take care